go ahead and get started. Today we've actually uh, kind of a quick one, but uh, we're going to be discussing um, a really interesting topic. We're going to be continuing our Respect the Inbox webinar series. Uh, we've uh, already gone through the first uh, couple of letters, and now we are on our third week here discussing speed. Um, again, myself, my name is Robert Schweikert. I'm an uh, account manager here with Benchmark, and uh, I have a colleague with me, Lisa Fletcher. Hi, folks. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, yes, and like I mentioned, we are doing Respect the Inbox webinar series. This is actually the second time we've gone through this webinar series in hopes to uh, better educate on um, you know, our listeners with how to best respect the inbox. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Um, again, you know, everybody, my name is Robert Schweikert. We have Lisa Fletcher here. And so um, for those of you who um, have questions, um, feel free to go ahead and ask those. You do have access to the control panel here. There is a questions box there. Uh, we do have a live representative that is available to answer any of those questions along with, we'll be trying to answer and address those um, live for you guys here as well. Uh, do note that some of the questions may be private, so we may just respond to you privately. For those of you who want to be in the public conversation, you're always welcome to uh, use the hashtag benchmark live. Go ahead and tweet your responses to us uh, and we're always happy to uh, address those. Um, as I mentioned, this is the Respect the Inbox webinar series and as you can see here we are on uh, S for speed uh, and this is actually going to be a really interesting uh, conversation and many of you marketers may not be aware or understand exactly what happens on our end in terms of how we actually get these emails uh, and send them out for you. And we'll be talking about just uh, some various topics revolving around speed in general. So one of our first topics here happens to be shared IPs. Now, uh, a shared IP uh, there, uh, is very common in the email marketing world, uh, especially for an ESP, an email service provider. The majority of us, we, we house what are called shared pools. And uh, these shared pools, they, they have many benefits uh, for uh, new marketers or small businesses in general. Um, one of those being that uh, you, know, you do tend to piggyback off of others' reputation. So when you're first starting out, let's say you're a brand new business, you just opened up shop, and you start to send out, well, you haven't really established any reputation. So spam filters, they really don't know how to um, take into account your content. So being, on, being in an existing environment that is a part of a shared IP, of course, this will allow you to piggyback off of existing reputation. Uh, and that will help kind of show a little bit more of the, being a reputable sender. Uh, you know, uh, a couple things about a shared IP to keep in mind here, of course, is uh, it is typically for someone who sends a little bit less volume than normal, something well, I'd say less, we consider um, low volume to be the average email marketer. A high volume sender is going to be someone who's going to be sending upwards of 100,000 emails, if not daily, weekly, uh, uh, and definitely monthly, and they'll start to uh, reap benefits, uh, or they'll lose benefits of a shared IP, uh, and they may want to consider going into a dedicated IP. We'll talk more about that right now in just a few moments. But uh, you know, while I have Lisa here, you know, what are some of the advantages that you see being in a shared IP? Well, in a shared IP, it's good because when you're with a group of other people and you're all sending on that shared IP, it raises the level of the IP. Now that can that can also have a detrimental effect, but most people actually do well on a shared IP um, because everybody's reputation buoys everyone else, right? So it's really good for those new senders or for people who are not really sure how to manage their online reputation and they're just starting. It's a great way to go. We that all of our um, starter accounts are on shared IP yeah. and any list plan 100,000 or less is on a shared IP and the reason why we do this is because right out the gate we know that you're going to be able to send and send well until you start to learn all of the little details yeah. on deliverability. Yeah, excellent. So, you know, like she mentioned, it is a double-edged sword. Uh, and for the most part, companies like Benchmark, ESPs, we will manage that. You know, we're in the business of delivering emails. And we want to ensure that you have the highest probability of landing consistently in the uh, in the inbox. And so when we talk about 
uh, you know, irregular sending or low volume, uh, it tends to take a little bit longer for you to establish that reputation where uh, you won't be scrutinized as heavily as you would if you're a new sender sending from your own server or system. Uh, again, this is ideal for small businesses when you're first starting out, relying more on uh, you know, your ESP, benchmark in this case, to do a little bit more of that behind the scenes managing. Now, something that we do is shared IPs. Uh, many of you may not know this, but uh, when you start to perform better, we'll actually sh switch you into a stronger pool. And the idea of that is that we're keeping you aligned with it, other individuals, other marketers in these pools that are sharing the same type of attributes that you are, the same type of sending behavior, the same type of open rates, click through, the engagement. So uh, by no means are we going to try to put someone who's very, uh, very new in a strong pool that's already been established. So that's actually a behind the scenes algorithm that runs in the background within our service that will switch you from pool to pool based off of your results. So the other side of the spectrum would be a dedicated IP. And a dedicated IP can benefit just about anybody as long as you are responsible for monitoring your reputation because again, it is solely going to be your responsibility to manage this. You're not going to be affected or piggybacking off of someone else's reputation. Well, let's talk a little bit about how you manage that reputation. That's that's a great thing, yeah. Yeah, okay, so in managing your reputation, it's not as hard as a lot of people think. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Monitor your results. If you don't see jumps in bounces, you know, if your open rate stays consistent, then you're probably doing okay and there are no alarms. But if you do see a dip in your bounces, mm -hmm. or you know, maybe a spike in this case, I mean, increase. That's what I meant. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. and, and and you're you're not getting the same result as far as your open rate goes. Mm -hmm. Then it's really important to take notice. And you could uh, check your reputation online to see if your domain still has a good reputation. You if you know your dedicated IP, you want to check that, yeah. right? Um, and if you have any questions, just reach out to us and we can help you understand what you need to do. A lot of times we can't do it for you because it's it's dependent on who's managing the yeah. domain, not who's managing your mail account. Um, but it is not as difficult as it, as it may seem. So anytime Definitely. you need help, just let us know. Yeah, you know, and like she was saying, you know, it does have a little bit of responsibility on your end. And something that I always like to point out, uh, we have the benefit of seeing tons of different marketers and their strategies and their success and, of course, their failures. And one of the things that we've noticed with all of the great email marketers that we've come across is that they all share something very common with uh, amongst themselves, and that's impeccable list management uh, practices. It's very important to understand who are the individuals that are engaged, who are the ones that are, you know, basically your 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 biggest fans. Uh, you know, you don't want to start to market in large, big groups of individuals that have a mix of people who are really engaged and people who are not so engaged. When we're thinking about the longevity of creating and establishing a viable reputation, then it's really important that we're focusing more so on the engagement. When we start to be lackadaisical and grab an old list and we just say, you know what, let's just blast it out and hope for the best. In today's market, it doesn't really work that well, and especially if you're in a dedicated IP. It can, to an extent, as long as you established strong reputation, you can take the hit, so to speak. And so uh, a couple of the things that we like to discuss here, uh, the reasons why we would recommend a dedicated IP, for one, it's available to anybody. If you want to be in your own sending environment and take responsibility, by all means, it is something that you can do, although it does come at an extra cost. And we'll get to those in just a moment here. On the left-hand side, we have some, uh, some of the attributes here of why you would want to uh, look into a dedicated IP. For one, if you're a high volume sender, you don't wanna be affected by anybody else. You wanna keep your own, uh, your own environment and manage that. And when you start to notice that something's dipping down, you have the responsibility and the authority to come in and make changes. Whereas in a shared IP, if something were to happen, you're really at the mercy of uh, you know, how the reputation is viewed on that server. So you can't really control what other marketers are sending. Although Benchmark takes a lot of responsibility in that, and we try to manage and mitigate that as much as possible, but we are human too, and uh, mistakes are made, and there's just some things that can't be foreseen to where we can prevent them all the time. 
Um, another great uh, benefit would be managing your reputation, like Lisa was saying, and we, we can't uh, stress on that enough. Your, your, your reputation is really everything in terms of how well you're going to perform in email marketing. And then, of course, you get faster sending. Uh, you know, those are also something uh, that if you're a large, high-volume sender and you have a deployment that you need to send out at 9 a.m. on Tuesday morning, and it's imperative that your uh, recipients receive that in a timely manner, send speeds may be of a concern to you. An invitation to something, a sale that might be running out of time, um, you know, this is your last chance to sign up or last chance to buy within whatever that duration of time might be. And so when things are time sensitive, being able to send a bit faster and more reliable, reliable, yeah, reliable, then uh, there's a great benefit for that. Now, something we didn't mention was the uh, shared IP. What are the send speeds of a shared IP? So uh, the top speed of a shared IP is 20,000 per hour. Now, when you're on a shared system, other people may be sending at that same time. So you may not get the full uh, 20,000 per hour. When you're on a dedicated IP, it's only you on that, and the dedicated IP is 25,000 per hour. So say you need to send out 100,000 emails, and you want them in the inbox within that hour, then you would need four IPs. At least four. Yep. Minimum of four IPs to make sure that your ma mail sends within that hour. Anytime you have uh, those time constraints, you may need to get additional IPs and you can do that with us, that's not a problem. Um, but we make sure that you have enough at least to send. If those time concerns are important, remember to calculate the proper amount of time to get your email in that inbox. Absolutely. You know, and uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that because it's really important to understand um, you know, if things are time sensitive, what's what are the needs? What is it? What's going to help you get to that point? Uh, shared systems. Um, again, uh, most most people are actually in those. If you're in any of our, our lower plans, uh, and it's not a bad thing. Uh, just be kind of um, you know weary and understand. Be open to understanding. Um, you know, when you do select a time to send, like 9 a.m. on a Tuesday morning or Wednesday, something like that. That those tend to be. Um, what was a good word? Uh, high times to send. There, lots of traffic is going on at that time. So um, it's not always a bad thing to have your emails go out over a, a span of time. A lot of times, spam filters like to see that, but they also really like to see consistency. That's the important thing. Um, so let's go and let's talk a little bit because I'm sure some of you guys have some questions about, uh, you know, what would it take to get into a dedicated IP. Now, we have a couple of things listed here on the right-hand side. For one, a dedicated IP does come at an extra cost. Now, it's not very expensive. Uh, it's about $28.95 uh, per IP per month. Uh, it is something that does take a little bit of time to get configured and set up. That actually falls on Benchmark's end. Uh, benefits of having your own dedicated IP is you can actually publish that IP address within your, domain, your DNS system. And I'll have Lisa kind of explain a little bit more about that. Yeah, so if you have a dedicated IP, um, what you can do is you can add that directly to your SPF. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, um, we in other words, it's have, like a we white list. a lot of people that need it. They just use our, our general, general, general <laughs> SPF record, and, and they have no issues. But some people do like to know their IPs, so we will always give you your IP numbers if you want to know what they are. Yes, yes. Um, so it does mention here that it is a little bit harder to start sending. And the only reason why we mention it's a little bit harder to start sending is because once we configure the IP and we provide that to you as a solution, it's going to take a little bit of time to warm up that IP. Uh, what we mean by warming it up is the recipients, they may be aware or they may be familiar with the content that you said, or at least their spam filters are. However, when you're using a new environment to send in, you're establishing a new reputation in that environment itself. So when a new IP is assigned to you, uh, there is a little bit of downtime, and this really varies on the, vo the sheer volume that you intend to send. Uh, those who send higher volumes, they, that send uh, downtime, so to speak, really dwindles down to just a few weeks. Um, and, and in most cases, we can get away with doing that. Now, there are some, some things that we can do. We're going to discuss throttling here in a few moments as well, and that's an added benefit uh, to you when you do switch over to a dedicated IP. And that's to basically slow things down a little bit so that uh, 
they're not the recipients servers aren't overwhelmed. Now uh, we do mention here that it is harder to reverse damage. Now I wouldn't say it's necessarily much harder, but there is more responsibility on you when you do have damage reputation. Um, meaning being that you do need to manage and stay on top of your list. More, you need to be active about this regularly. We like to uh, create like a schedule essentially. If you're sending bi-weekly or just a monthly email, uh, it may take you longer to recover from damaged uh, reputation because you just don't have a lot of volume that I, these recipients, spam filters, they need to have and filter through this volume in order to understand and really establish a relationship with you and know what to perceive moving forward. Now, talking about some of these harder things uh, when we talk about dedicated IPs, now we only mention them to you briefly here just because it is something that we want to be upfront about, although these aren't things that are, I would call them big hurdles at all. Uh, downtime of maybe a week or two is really nothing when it, when it comes to the added benefits that you get being in your own environment. And when he's talking downtime, he's just talking, it, it's actually not that long. That would be worst case scenario, um, and very rarely does it take that long. Mm -hmm. So we can help you understand what you need to do to correct if you happen to run into trouble. But the point is, is if you're following the respect the inbox principles, you're not gonna run into any trouble. Exactly, exactly. You know, managing those lists is really important and that's what's gonna cause, you know, if you have a lot of spam traps or a lot of bounces, those are things that give you hits on your reputation and it takes time to recover from those. So like Lisa was mentioning, if you're on top of your game and you're following the best practices that are outlined here in respect the inbox, you really won't run into any trouble. So uh, this actually brings us into a sender score. Now, we actually discussed a bit about sender score previously in one of our other webinars. For those of you who weren't able to join us in that webinar, we do have these posted online for you. So if you want to go back and take a look, you're more than welcome to do that. We also have uh, a recorded version, I believe, that can be emailed out to you as well. But sender score essentially is just a score that's between 0 to 100. And it works very much like a, like a credit score. If you perform well, you're desired by inboxes or lenders will want to lend you money. Uh, but if you're really low on that score, then uh, you're going to be more of a risk to accept your mail. And uh, that's really important when we think about looking and um, identifying, you know, the difference between a shared IP and a dedicated IP. Shared IPs tend to have more volume because there's other people that are, are sending in that environment, not just you. So you have a, uh, Sometimes it's, you, you'll recover very quickly from that. Although when you start to see something like this, your health meter start to dwindle down to below a four or a five, you definitely want to start to pay attention and see, speak to one of us, reach out to us. We're gonna give you pointers and insight to how you can do that. And some of that insight, you know, I'd love to you know, have Lisa kind of you know, give a couple scenarios and just explain, you know, she does a lot of the remediation uh, within Benchmark here. So if you start to see that your reputation is taking a hit and you're not getting as much traction in your email marketing, opens are dwindling down, click-throughs aren't really getting, to, not really happening, you know, those are all telltale signs that it's time to revamp and look at some of the stuff that you're doing. So I'll, I'll let Lisa kind of explain some use cases here. Okay, so um, sometimes I'll see uh, a case where somebody will come in and they'll have taken a hit, right? They use an old list and they didn't clean it first, they didn't understand why. So explain to them, understand why they want to use a cleaned up list, but they had the problem of their score had taken a dip. And they didn't even know what a sender score was, so I was able to help them understand the sender score, understand what was wrong with their list, and then slowly we were able to help them repair it um, just by doing, uh, basically doing better sending removing those bad addresses. When just, and just as soon as they'd done that, you know, within uh, maybe three or four cents, they saw a significant jump in their sender score just because you don't give up. You yeah. just, you, you basically address it, you find the problem, and then you keep going. Another instance where somebody had, had um, they had dedicated IPs, but they weren't monitoring them. Yeah. And I told them, well, what's your sender score? And they said, well, our domain score is fine, but our IP score is bad. And, and so I said, well, you check to see if you're blacklisted. And they were blacklisted, and they were able to reverse the blacklisting, and they were able to send immediately a great improvement. As soon as they understood they needed to 
manage that reputation. Yeah. They were able to make uh, basically have great result with pretty quickly. Yeah, you know, and something to keep in mind as well when we talk about your results. You know, think about um, you know there are um, open, you know general open rates uh, across industries, and you should be typically shooting for above ten percent. If you're doing really well, you're going to be twenty five percent or greater. Uh, when we start to do these big umbrella type campaigns, and we grab all of our lists together and we send that out, a lot of we see a lot of marketers do this, and we call it blasting. And when that kind of thing happens, I tend to see open rates around two, three percent, sometimes even lower. And a lot of times that has to do with they damage their reputation by sending to that. Spam filters like to see consistency and they like to see people engaged. So if you have a big list and you're not quite sure about the majority of people on there because you haven't emailed to them and I don't know, six months or more, then I would I would definitely pump the brakes a little bit and focus on those who are engaged with the product or engaged with uh, you know some type of, of you know services whatever it is that you're doing within your emails that way you're really focusing on more of that low lying fruit and when you have the opportunity if you know that you're at a seven or higher then that would be a good opportunity that you could you could theoretically take a hit and it wouldn't damage you and it wouldn't it wouldn't cause a lot of issues for you uh, but definitely you know keep that in mind and thinking about you know where is your open rate today. Are you between zero and five percent? Are you between five and ten percent? Ten and fifteen or twenty percent? You know, these are all. You know, your industry is going to obviously it's going to be a little bit different across the board. But generally, I mean, I would think around ten percent open rate is something that I would see of the norm. Of course, you know, you want to see a bit higher. An average open rate uh, overall probably around what fifteen percent? You think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really it's, depends. It's really dependent on how engaged your audience is and your industry because of different industries and different audiences have different open rates. Um, but if you're getting an overall, if you're getting an open rate that's under 10%, then you may want to look at what you can do to improve it. Definitely, definitely. And you know, of course, we have the reputation health meter that is located on the dashboard when you log into your account. And below that, there's a little link that says learn more. So if you guys are ever curious about what the centers, what your reputation score is and what that means, go ahead and give that a click, give it a read, and if you have any questions about it, reach out to us. We're here to help you. We want to ensure that you guys have the best chances of landing in the inbox consistently. Um, you know, something else to, uh, to think about here are bounces. Now, um, you know, bounces happen for tons of different reasons, but when we're talking about speed specifically, uh, one of the things that we tend to see a lot of, and it, it's pretty much with anybody who's taken a hit of some sort, that if you see a spike in bounces, right there is usually a, a, a sign that something is going on with the reputation of the domain or the reputation of the IP server being used. Uh, so when we think about sending something too quickly, now for those of you who um, are, are new to email marketing and you know you might just be you know, you're coming into a position and being told, hey, I gotta get all of these emails out immediately. You know, our first thing is, hey, let's create an email campaign, let's schedule and send it out without really thinking about how many contacts are in there. Now, with the information that we've given you guys regarding shared IPs and how fast that theoretically you can send versus a dedicated IP and how quickly you can send with that, understanding that when you schedule out a large campaign, something you know, 50,000, 100,000, 150,000, whatever that might be, you know, stretching it out over a period of time actually benefits a lot of marketers. Uh, you know, one of those cases would be that if you went from a shared IP system into a dedicated system. Uh, we, I talked about a downtime. It's not like you're not able to send. You're definitely able to send. It's just going to slow things down a little bit because we're going to set up something called throttling. And uh, throttling, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment here again as well, but throttling actually helps pump those brakes a little bit and prime uh, your recipients to receive uh, the, this content. And if you end up sending too quickly, you can see a lot of bounces, and you know, Lisa and I were talking about this just a few minutes ago beforehand. And uh, you had a, a use case recently that someone had a bunch of soft bounces. What they did. Okay. And so somebody had called, and they were really confused because they had about a thousand soft bounces, but they were still under four percent bounces. And so I told them, I said it was just a case of those the, the recipient server, because this was all to a particular domain. Yeah. So this particular domain had couldn't take the speed at that point. 
And so they had slowed it down. So some of them had bounced back. And I told them not to worry, there's soft bounces because we know that there's a speed issue. And they were, they're on a shared system that we're going to automatically adjust that and slow it down so that they can still have something in a soft bounce. And in the same report, they could show that it was delivered. It was either opened or unopened so that we did reach the inbox and the majority of yeah. that person's soft bounces. So now on a dedicated IP, it, we're going to have throttling initially, but it's uh, it, it'll be set to full speed after your throttling period is done. So then you would just need to look through your reports and see if there's consistent higher than average bouncing and then address this and say, hey, I'd like to redo the throttling. So we've mentioned a couple averages, you know, average open rate, average bounces. So what would what would be something good to, to kind of let our viewers, our listeners understand, you know, what is something that's acceptable in uh, an email marketing campaign? In that's, terms of bounces oh, okay, or reputation, okay. yeah. That, that was very broad. Um, okay, so an acceptable bounce rate on, I see, the people who are don't have the tightest lists, but they are still following all the rest of the practices. You know, they're not constantly checking their list, but they keep okay. Uh, they're they're okay on it. They get about a three percent. Yeah. You know, anything over three percent, there's definitely a problem. If they're kind of lackadaisical, they're going to get three percent. Um, some of our people who are really up on engagement and taking care of that, they're getting less than one yeah. percent bounces. Yeah, and that's, that means more and more emails that you're sending are landing in the inbox, theoretically. Hopefully landing consistently in the inbox. Right. Um, you know, there are differences between a hard bounce and a soft bounce, and they do mean uh, different things at different times. When you're sending with a new dedicated IP and you receive a lot of soft bounces, it could be an issue of sending speeds. And that's why throttling is something that we would set up to pump those brakes a little bit. Which brings us into which brings us into throttling, and uh, we have discussed a bit about it, um, some of the advantages uh, of it, and the reasons why we do that. Um, dedicated IPs is really the scenario uh, where it makes the most sense. When you're warming these, when we're warming these IPs up, we're sending out our content. We want to try to pick up exactly where we left off before, because hey, you are in the we want to we want to increase our revenue as a marketer, and uh, we may have come into a position and you know having an, uh, the ability of going into a dedicated system, um, we have this as a feature that, that it's something that Benchmark puts on an RM. And a typical scenario of this, let's say you have a list of 125,000 and you wanna, you, you just switched from MailChimp or Constant Contact and you're coming aboard. And one of the things that we're gonna tell you initially is we're gonna say, hey, you know what? We'd love you guys to come on over, but we're gonna set up throttling on your dedicated IPs. Now, I mentioned multiple IPs in this case because this individual wants to send 125,000 emails uh, right away. And so I would recommend at least five dedicated IPs for that. Now you can get away with doing four, with four, uh, and what we would wanna do with throttling is we're gonna set that up that any campaign that exceeds maybe 50,000 uh, subscribers that will have that 50,000 go out over the course of maybe two to four hours, something like that. And of course, when you increase the volume and you wanna, also, you know, try to get everybody in the inbox within a re uh, you know reasonable amount of time. That could also stretch from four to six hours, even you know. And if you're sending millions of emails, expect you know six to twelve hours, something like that. And again, you know, this is a scenario that it doesn't happen forever. Uh, it's typically, you know, I'd say you know, really depending on your volume, and how often you're sending. Uh, Lisa was mentioning worst case scenario, you know, it could be around two, three weeks. That's typically what I generally tell everybody. When you're first ramping things up, you're going to make changes and stuff like that. So I generally say about three weeks. But for the most part, when you're first coming aboard, it's what, like a week or two? It really right. depends on the number of sending. I would say within 10 sends, by then you probably have throttling removed at that right. point. Right. So if you're doing 10 sends and it's spread out across two months, then you're going to be throttled longer. If you're doing 10 sends and it's within a week and a half, the throttling is going to come off quicker because you're sending more. Exactly, exactly. You know, and uh, Lisa, so let's talk about the difference between someone who does have throttling set up and they're trying to send sheer volume like this versus someone who's not set up and doesn't have that. I mean, what is something that would be typical to see that would tell us, you know, send speeds are too quick? Will we see them in bounces? Or? Yeah, you, you'd see more bounces. So that's, that would be a direct result. So when we see a lot more bounces like this, it's going to exceed something like 5%. We would, it, you're going to see 
pretty large amount of your emails that are going to come back as bounce back. It's kind of hard to say because of the fact that it could be going to different domains. And not all domains are going to have the problems with speed. Like uh, a lot of the uh, private domains, business domains, they're not going to have those problems unless you're sending a huge bulk to them, which most people aren't. It's going to be the uh, Yahoo, Gmail, AOL. That's where you're going to uh, need to think about, I don't want to send, you know, more than ten thousand an hour into this one domain. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes more sense too. Yeah. So we do have a couple questions here. I got one right here. Uh, I won't say anybody's name. Don't worry. But uh, they're reporting that when they first started out, that they were receiving um, about fifteen percent open rate, and then that started to dwindle down over time. Do you think that has something to do with send speeds? Now, with that situation particularly, I, I don't think that it would necessarily be a send speed issue. I would also like to look at the number of contacts that are actually being sent within this, uh, because that, again, like Lisa was saying before, that that really does, de it's dependent on uh, you know, how long throttling or something that would be set up over a period of time. It's about the volume. But if you're seeing that your open rate is dropping, um, I would definitely consider looking at, uh, just see your bounce report. That would be the first place I would look. If you see that there's uh, a large amount of bounces, something exceeding 3 5%, definitely look at that. One of the things that Lisa and I tend to, to notice when new marketers come aboard is something that can really benefit you is adding an SPF record. Furthermore, you can also add um, a C name record, other, otherwise known as DKIM, DECOM record. And both of those records is something that uh, we highly recommend for all marketers. When you're using a third-party system, ask them, do you guys offer some form of authentication? Benchmark, we do offer that. And uh, that is an added benefit to you being able to show that you're a reputable sender. SPF is Sender Policy Framework, essentially just telling the world these are the applications that we use as a third party and they're going to send in our behalf. Anything that doesn't meet that should, should be basically you know, filtered away essentially and uh, protecting the person's inbox of course. So uh, you know, that would be something that I would recommend. And if you have that in place, then there might be something else that might be underlining. So definitely reach out. Um, you know, if it's dropped down to less than 5%, Let's definitely, let, let's, uh, you're, you're not lost or anything like that, and it's something you can definitely recover from. So reach out to Lisa or myself uh, or anybody in support. You know, we're always happy to address and find out. You know, we're going to uncover every rock that we can find and, and you know, try to come down to an agreement what's going on. We also have the ability of pulling bounce logs. So that is a direct response from the recipient. Their, their filters will respond back and they're going to give us a code and usually we're able to find out exactly what caused that. Indeed. So, uh, you know, again here with throttling, uh, you know, I don't think with that use case a moment ago, I don't think that it would be a send speed uh, concern uh, necessarily. But um, you know, it, it, theoretically, I mean, it, there there is a there is a chance that uh, it could be. So we definitely want to look at that. But if it's over many cents, you know, five or six cents, something like that, then we definitely want to look at the reputation. I think it'd be more of a reputation case there. I'm just laughing because uh, uh, giggling a little bit. This um, image that we have in here oh. is, as is <laughs> showing bandwidth, and it's not. It is a bandwidth issue. Um, it's a bandwidth issue on their end. So it's an account issue when we're thinking here at Benchmark, how many we want to send per hour, and it's because it's using their bandwidth. So there's the connection between the yeah. two. I know, and I'd seen that. You know, I just I didn't even think I was thinking miles per hour, but oh. it's definitely uh, <laughs> MVPS there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, that pretty much concludes uh, you know a lot of the topics that we have. Well, today's topic revolving around speed. Um, you know, just to kind of recap on a few things here, we did discuss shared IPs and dedicated IPs, the difference between the two, the added benefits and the costs, of course. Uh, send speeds uh, revolving around the shared IP is going to be generally around 20,000 per hour at its height. Um, expect something, you know, again, if you're sending at a prime time, uh, 9 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, something like that, you, you might see a little bit slower speeds uh, in a shared system. Uh, and dedicated, you're pretty much always going to see 25,000 per hour unless you have throttling set up. And again, throttling is not something that's necessary for a long term. 
it, it's usually something that's only in a short term and it's just to help you build reputation. We don't want to bombard the recipient servers and spook them and because they, they scare easily and when they do, they just reject everything right back because they're going to err on the side of caution and just not accept something because it's easier for them to do that than it is to potentially have to deal with whatever my repercussions that might come from that. Um, aside from that, we did discuss uh, throttling, of course, because we have that in front of us here. Uh, talked about the yeah, versus the shared. Uh, again, the cost of a dedicated IP is $28.95 per month per IP. Generally, uh, we like to consider what is the volume that you're looking to send. Um, again, if you're going to send 100,000 emails, if it's not necessary to send it all in one hour, a single IP could do it. Um, I would still recommend at least having two because you don't want to take 100,000 of that spread out over four hours. Um, you know, most of us, we like to get our emails out within you know, an hour or so. And again, if you need to send faster than an hour, well, more IPs would be necessary. Uh, the send speeds are 25,000 per hour per IP, but if you need to send out more than that and less than an hour, more IPs will definitely accommodate your sending speed. So keep that in mind. And again, if you guys need help trying to figure out the math on that, speak with us. We're always happy to uh, understand, you know, have the open conversation, try to understand your practices, and we'll give you guidance based off of that. All right, so I'll go and I'll open up for questions and answers. I'm sure that several of you guys have some questions here. Forgive me because I, I can't quite see them anymore. They, they disappeared on my screen. Let's see. Oh, here we go. We have some great comments here. I, I appreciate that. Thank you, everybody, for, for joining in today. So here's one re uh, regarding how do, I, how do I know if I'm on a shared IP or a dedicated IP? That's a great question. So uh, one of the easiest things to do is look at your monthly bill with us. If you're on a free plan, you're most likely in a shared, uh, a shared IP. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, but if you're in a paid plan, just take a look. You can always look, um, I believe it's under plan information. So you'll click on your name in the upper right hand corner once logged in. You're going to select account settings. When that page loads on the left hand side, uh, you should see something called plan information. And there you should see if there's one that's checkboxed, if there's a checkbox there or not. Again, you can also look at your invoice and see if there's an, uh, an IP address. Right. Those are additional IPs, so you can check your plan information if you purchased an IP um, and check on your billing. But uh, all of our plans, 100,000 and lower, do not automatically come with a dedicated IP or on the shared system. Anything list plan 125,000 or above will have two or more, depending on the le level that you're at, dedicated IPs. You know, let's talk about that really quick too, because we, there are some high volume senders, and uh, when you are in that high volume sending environment, Benchmark will actually provide you dedicated IPs. Uh, now, we don't provide you a lot of them. We, we provide you with, you know, as Lisa was mentioning, depending on your volume, is how many that we actually get, but we'll always recommend for you to have more if you want to up those send speeds. Um, about 125K, it's, it's. That's two. It's two dedicated IPs. And, Again, you know, two dedicated IPs is fifty thousand per hour, and for the most part, uh, you know, we're not all sending uh, or trying to send a hundred thousand emails within one hour. And if that is your use case, then speak with us and let's find a way uh, and a plan for you uh, that would be most suitable for it. For, but for the most part, uh, sending a campaign over the course of two hours isn't going to hurt. Um, a lot of times, it, it could be great for you because if you're sending internationally, or I'm sorry, nationally. We have time zone difference. Uh, if you're sending it, you know, start that sending at, on East Coast time, and it takes a couple hours for it to send out. Well, then that gives a little bit more time for the rest of the country that's waking up to go ahead and get in their inbox and start to see that as well. And if you wonder, uh, you're on a high volume, and you, you want to know how many IPs uh, that are given for that account, just let us know because depending on the, the level, again, it can be different numbers. So and the bigger that your account is, the more IPs that you get. Correct. And of course, for those of you who are, are growing their businesses, and you guys start to see this, and you come in, let's say you jump in on a 125K uh, list plan, as your list grows, and we start to see that we'll, we will add an additional IP when we find that it's suitable. So keep in mind that it's not something you always have to request in that sense. If you do upgrade, it's automatically done as long as you're upgrading above 100,000 uh, subscribers. 
For those of you that are below 100,000 subscribers, if you want to reap the benefits of a dedicated IP, um, it usually takes us about anywhere from about 12 hours to 24 hours to configure an IP for you. Um, if you let us know in the morning, we'll probably get it done uh, in that evening for you. Um, again, you know, these this does require someone to physically go in and uh, you know log into the server and configure that for you specifically. And um, again, when that is when that does happen, you can always request from us the IP address so that you can start to monitor monitor your own reputation and that server reputation on your own time. Just a note: if you want to get that IP faster, make sure that you have your DKIM updated with the CNAME and your SPF because we're going to get um, from our engineering team, they'll want to know if that's in place because it's going to directly affect it. So if you get that added uh, sooner, it will make the whole process go a lot faster. Yeah, so let's think about that checklist really quick because that is really important. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Uh, when going into a dedicated IP, you mentioned having SPF record in place along with CNAME. Right. Very, very important. That should be one of the first things that you do. For those of you who are unfamiliar with these terms, if you don't recall doing that, uh, ask us. We'll go in, we'll look on your domain, and, and if you don't have that in place, we'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. Lisa and myself will even be more than happy to jump on a phone call and walk you through it ourselves. Right. Very important for the success of email marketing. So um, I think that that about uh, we can about wrap it up at this point. Uh, for those of you who are in our free plan, we do want to offer um, a premium package for you. Some of the stuff that we do include here uh, would be Automation Pro is a very fantastic tool for creating um, these type of automations that have many conditions. Uh, conditions like have they open, have they click, they get this email. You build it with a bird's eye view, so you really get to you know, examine the logic behind it. We have tons of templates that are really great for you to use. It makes it very simply, uh, simple to adopt. Um, additional features here that are very attractive to a lot of people would be to remove the benchmark logo from the footer of your emails. Uh, that can be done upon request as long as you're in any one of our pro plans, any of the upgraded plans. Uh, again, we also have unlimited email sending capabilities for you as well, up to 50,000 subscribers. So that's another really great benefit to uh, consider there as well. So we want to say thank you guys for attending. We really appreciate your time and your questions and comments, of course. Uh, stay tuned for next week because we'll be talking about practices okay. uh, as we continue. Um, yeah, thanks, guys.